first. Right. We'll go ahead and just get started. When Justin said there was two great presenters tonight, Dale and I looked at each other and were like, let's do ours fast so we get to them. <laughs> first thing, we're it. Um, my name is Phil Mosta. I'm executive director of the Med Quarter, and I started my position June 1st. Uh, prior to that, I was co-owner of Tallgrass Business Resources, and you might remember it as Pioneer Workspace Solutions, right on First Avenue across from Co. Did that for 27 years, and now I'm doing something new. I'll pass around my cards if you care for a card, take one, keep it. Um, I'm going to buzz through this pretty quick. I, I went through it uh, this evening when I arrived, and I realized even since I started June 1st and started giving this presentation, several things have changed. Um, who here has even heard of the Med Porter before tonight? Okay. Who here knows what a SMID is? Self sustaining? Okay. This would be educational then. Um, so there's, there's the uh, med quarter boundaries. Uh, people always say, well, what are its boundaries? And I tell them every time, it looks like a piece of a, of a puzzle. Because it, it zigs and zags around, there's definite stories as to why it drives in and dives out at certain blocks. Roughly, it's from A Avenue to 8th Avenue, 6th Street to 13th Street-ish. That's where it starts jogging around. We butt up against uh, Oak Hill Jackson, Wellington, and then the downtown district on, on the top of this map, uh, the downtown district butts right up to it um, on that side. A little bit different view that I, I think is more helpful because it, it helps you kind of see what, what are, what's in the boundaries. So you've got Mercy Medical Center up 10th Street to PCI, further up 10th Street to A Avenue, Unity Point St. Luke's, and then 4th Avenue, down to Green Square Park and the, the new library. And then uh, up on the map in the upper left hand corner, you see how we push up against the downtown SMID and then where New Bohemia and Czech Village are. New Bohemia, uh, to the downtown SMID and the up and the Med Q SMID are the only two official uh, districts right now, New Bohemia is trying to uh, put through the Smith tax, and I know that Czech Village would like to do it as well, but they're less organized at this point. Our timeline, uh, I've been involved with the Med Quarter for Medical Smith since 2009. That's when Mercy, St. Luke's, and PCI hired a gentleman by the name of John Helbling to help uh, as a consultant to help pull together a, a team of people to go out and get the signatures necessary because we had to have 85% of the property ownership in favor of the tax. And, and um, I've been saying SMID, but I guess I forgot to define it. SMID is self-sustaining municipal improvement district, and self-sustaining means these people signed the document saying, I'm willing to pay $3.75 additional tax for every $1,000 of property value to go into funds to make the med quarter its own development mechanism. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, so since 2009, we went out and got uh, signatures. We took the uh, petition to the uh, city council. City council approved us. Uh, then, the, it, since it's, a, it's still a city commission, we have to be appointed by uh, the mayor. Uh, it's a board of 12 property owners or executives of companies within properties within the mid quarter and we are a gender balanced board we have uh, uh, six females and six males on the board uh, and then we got got to work with our first meeting back in february uh, 2012 and have been pursuing efforts ever since uh, our board this is one of the pieces that's outdated uh, uh, we, the unfilled position has now been filled by a woman by the name of Karen Smith. She works at Republic Abstract and Sullivan on First Avenue. Um, but the other 11 are, are still accurate. Um, and uh, as of July 1st, again, outdated, Ted Townsend has stepped down as board chair. He did two years, and now Tim Charles from uh, Mercy Medical Center is our new board chair, or commission chair. And everybody on the commission is in for three-year terms. Our vision, essentially, as I alluded to, is to revitalize the area, direct development, create enhancements. And if you, if you can picture in your mind the way that 
Tenant Street books from 1st Avenue to 3rd Avenue in front of PCI, in front of Firestone, in front of, on the side, if you will, of Immaculate Conception and 1st Lutheran, and then down to the old cardiologist. There's really nice brick inlay at the crosswalks. There's uh, benches and trash receptacles, nicer light poles, uh, etc., so that it has a more modern and, and uh, a more welcoming look and feel. That is our model moving all the way down 10th Street and down 4th Avenue. That, that is our goal in terms of the aesthetic and the look and feel of everything. Down 4th Avenue, which way? 4th Avenue towards Green Square Park. Okay. And Just actually, 4th uh, Avenue would, uh, our district, if I went back to the map, brings you up to 16th Street, uh, where we cut in, 15th or 16th Street, where we cut in and then, then go over. So Living Center East? Is that west? Yeah. East? Um, I'm going to buzz through these because, quite frankly, they're boring. But, uh, uh, these are these are things that under our master development plan, I, I should touch on that briefly. The first thing that we did as a commission is we hired a firm called Lakota Group out of Chicago to come up with a master development plan. And that's important to know as I go through some of the, the picture slides because it's one thing to want improvement, but it's another thing to have a plan about how you're going to do those improvements and in what sequence or in what priority. And the master development plan is what organized our thoughts on that. So I'm going to buzz through these and get to the fun part because this is easier to explain. So I talked about 10th Street. That's, if you will, that's kind of our spine connecting Mercy to St. Luke's and PCI. And also the 411 10th Street building and just a whole lot of specialty clinics and, and physicians. I'm sorry. No, you're you're going going. Going. So you've got the spine of 10th Street, which is the blue. <laughs> Our Medquarter Greenway is what I'm talking about of the, the 4th Avenue connector down to Green Square Park, which is up in that upper left hand corner. Green Square is not in our uh, district, but it is in downtown district. And then the yellow, I think, is important for this, this evening's conversation, and that is recognizing the fact that we don't want to build six story corporate towers right up to the end of the block and then have a, a, a story and a half home on the other side of the street. It's not a good blend. It's, it's not recognizing the fact that we need to transition. So those, these transition zones going from the med queue into, in this case, Wellington and uh, we got cut off, but also into the Oak Hill Jackson on this side, we're recognizing the fact that, that we are a commercial district resting against residents, a residential neighborhood, and we want to work with and, and have it so that it's accepted aesthetically pleasing and functional against uh, a neighborhood set. Um, when Justin and I met, you know, one of his concerns was, how can we be good neighbors to each other? And I, I think recognizing the difference and, and uh, what we want to achieve, both respectively and collectively, and keep the, the communication going as, as those changes happen is the most important key. Uh, and then First Avenue, obviously, anybody that owns a re retail store is going to want the kind of traffic that First Avenue is. So that is our, essentially our retail corridor. Not that we can't or won't have retail within other parts of the district, but First Avenue is prime property for retail development because of the traffic now. Um, this is just a, a rendering from Lakota Group of the difference, if you will, on this lower right-hand corner is a, is a shot as it looks looking down 3rd Avenue. And then they've conceptualized how we would improve it. Uh, bump outs, which the city is doing a great job of converting bump outs. It, it uh, provides a place for plantings. It also shortens the distance for the pedestrians going from curb to curb. And then winding the sidewalks, putting in seating, uh, what they're conceptualizing here is like uh, information that we would have along the path for a walking trail. Let's say you're on 3rd Avenue and there's a uh, thing about historic uh, sites and you're directed to the new history center or you're directed to graduate studio. Something to let you know the environment that you're in and that you're literally two and a half blocks or two blocks away from graduate studio. I'll walk there. Let's go take a look. Um, so that's the visioning. Uh, that we're pursuing in our master plan. Again, the Greenway along 4th Avenue with uh, Green's, Green's Picky Point, Green Square Park. It's going to be called Green Square from here on. 
Green Square down this way, and then Wellington Heights up that way. And are we now calling it New Wellington? Is that the correct name? Or is it Wellington Heights? Maybe you like that. <laughs> as long as it starts with Wellington, right? Again, a uh, comparison of, of uh, how the Greenway can be implemented. 10th Street Corridor, uh, there you see the 4th Avenue Greenway and then the improvements along uh, 10th Street. Um, trying to bring more greenery, we desperately, desperately, desperately want to get uh, the grain trucks off 10th Street. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, Mayor, but are there bike trails on yeah. the street? Are you going to keep those in place? Then? Well, not trails, bike lanes. Lanes. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. That's part of the city's master plan in terms of, uh, you know, 3rd Avenue is queued for it. We don't have enough width on 4th Avenue, but I know 3rd Avenue is queued for it. And we ran out of width on 10th Street. But uh, I think they're going to find which streets it will fit into. And I'm, quite frankly, I'm very pleased with what the city has committed to in terms of bike lanes. Uh, and they're all getting used. I mean, yeah. for the first couple of years, like, why are they doing that? And now, I day and every night, single day, work, work yeah, day and night, uh, people are going up and down. So what's going on on Third Avenue? Anything going on on Third Avenue? Uh, it's already been fully approved along the avenue, and it would be the wider sidewalks and the signage and, and things like that. But again, that priority order comment that I made, we're really focused on 10th Street and 4th Avenue right now on improvements. And 10th Street right now is three years behind. It was supposed to be down to 6th or 8th Avenue by now, and we're still stalled at 4th Avenue. Because we've got, if I'm in the right spot, we've got those like a shopping center. The Care Pro strip mall between uh, No, that's on 10th. Oh. I'm talking Third Avenue. That, that older Salvation Army. Salvation oh. Army, yeah. that area through there is really good use and improvement. Yeah. Think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, the sidewalk's kind of broken up. Yeah. 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 No, that, and I think that as we get off of our core and are able to, to radiate out, we can start tackling on some of that. Um, signage, there's, you have seen the banners on the far right, though. There's 108 banners up throughout the, the district. We're now planning to put these uh, monument signs at five locations on the perimeter, main feeders coming in, uh, First Avenue, A Avenue, Beat Street, <coughs> Uh, just to designate the area, uh, and we're, we also are working with the city and with the downtown district on a comprehensive signage and wayfinding initiative because there's there's just not good signage people coming in from out of town to get them to Nouveau to downtown, uh, and it's not it hasn't been coordinated. It's just been kind of done haphazard. So we're redoing that. Or trying to help to reduce. Yeah. How do you propose to deal with the grain trucks? Uh, because that's a major issue. That's one of the major issues in town's for a school process. How do you vote? Uh, if you. Uh, but, but how do y'all plan on doing it without uh, interfering with those trucks? Those are major contributors. Yeah, we're not going to take them away at all. Uh, the history of it, and this is way more than you want to know. They, because of reasons unknown by me, they took it off of 6th Street, diverted it, and if you looked at the path that the, the grain trucks are taking inbound to Cargill, they're coming in on 6th Street, or uh, yeah, uh, 7th Street, going over on 1st Avenue to 10th Street, back over to 6th, and, and then over to Cargill. It is a very indirect route, and that's by the city directing them as the truck route. We're working with the city, and 6th and 7th Street are going to be converted to two-way. 6th and 8th, sorry, 6th and 8th. Six um, are going to be converted to two-way, and we're working with the city to see that they can straight shut them in and not divert them over to 10th. I'm on that subject. I know it has a lot to do with the city stuff, too, but uh -huh. I live on 3rd Avenue, and one of the things I'm very willing to put up with is it's a major route for emergency vehicles. And are they not going to get slowed down a lot with all these changes? I don't think so. You don't think so? Okay. There's a question. Yeah. I got a question. Uh, there are a lot of uh, homes in that area. Uh, what's going to happen in there? Are they going to be acquired? Are you talking from 6th Street? I'm uh, talking from 10th Street toward town, toward right. downtown. 
between 1st Avenue and 8th Avenue. There are still a lot of homes in that area. I would challenge the word a lot of, uh, as you look at the map, there's very few single family homes in existence. I'm not talking single family, I'm talking about places where there, you know, there's single people, maybe uh, two people. Yeah. yeah. Apartment buildings. There, you know. there, there's a couple of apartment buildings on the fourth, and maybe I'm not envisioning the right spot there. When we looked at our land use, land use map, there were very few residences, uh, and you're right, multifamily. That's because they've been family. continuously being bought out. Yeah. yeah. And, and, that, and that's true. Back to that other map, and back to a comment that Justin made to me. I think, I think you're going to see that happen from our, our boundaries in, but we have no desire to go boundaries out in terms of, of trying to, to remove residents. It's more a matter of how the, the, the plan is used internally. Okay. Man. And I'm trying to understand all this. Okay, it all sounds nice to update everything, mm -hmm. but when you update, doesn't that wouldn't that have a ripple effect eventually to the neighborhood? Because look how close PCI, and there are residents, there are houses that are around that, but eventually, would the city request that they get up to date in order to be? <coughs> Kind of matching to their surroundings? I, I think that's that's the perspective of redevelopment or, or gentrification, whereas in, in the conversation I have with Justin, I think there's more a matter of, of the fact that it could increase the demand for adjacent residents, like what Scopeman is doing and like what the Total Child Program is doing, where professionals who work within the district will look closely at the surrounding residential areas and see if they might not want to live and work that, that close. One of the things we want to see happen is, is an increased demand for residents in, in and around our, our district. And that's happening down in the Oak Hill Jackson area where the hash development has done now their third apartment building. Um, I don't call them rent control, they're, uh, they're uh, affordable apartments. They're rate. affordable. Yeah. Um, so that, and that has made a huge difference uh, for the Oak Hill Jackson. I gotta keep moving. Rob. Um, you mentioned, I wanna go back to the board and you mentioned that the, uh, uh, you know, the Med Q butts up to Oak Hill and to Wellington Heights and that in your conversation with Justin, you felt like communication was an important thing. I wonder if there'd be some way or maybe there is already to accommodate uh, people to come to your meetings from those two neighborhoods so that we can be assured that communication. Absolutely. Ours is a public meeting by law. So uh, second Wednesday of every month at Tall Grass Business Resources, 8 to 9 to 30. Uh, go on the website. All our minutes are posted on the website. Uh, uh, it's uh, dumbedquarter.com. Uh, we get money from taxes, so we are completely transparent, uh, and our meetings are all, and notes are all public. Um, this is just a, a kind of a quick synopsis of some of the accomplishments that we've done in the first two years. I don't know if you have seen it yet, but this mural, the Grantwood mural that was installed on that old GMC building at uh, A Avenue and 7th Street, nice. right as you come up, nice. gorgeous. I have gotten so many positive comments on that, and I got to tell you, that is St. Luke's taking an idea that Lakota, our, our consultant, brought to us as, as kind of a significant area where you can kind of set the tone coming in. And they spent some real money to get the print rights to take two Grantwood uh, paintings and, and make them into a yeah. Somebody sliced it. What I'm thankful of is they sliced this part yeah. and not the pretty painting. Um, and then co-branding is a very important part of it. And so what you're starting to see now, St. Luke's, all of their monument signs have the med quarter on it. Uh, Physicians Clinic of Iowa flashes the med quarter. Uh, uh, healthcare has its place is our tagline. You're seeing the queue either in black or in, or in red on the doors. Uh, and we're also looking, working with the city on possibly doing sign toppers on top of the, the street signs at the corners so that it's designated as, as, a, as part of the bad queue, uh, just to give it a, a sense of, of OK. 
presentation. That's boring. <laughs> Um, marketing and branding, I don't even want to talk about it because it's my life now. Uh, website, um, again, please go to the website, but uh, uh, the Master Development Plan is, is available on download. Uh, get all the meet, uh, meetings, uh, meeting minutes, and also the ability to go in and find out about all the different caregivers and retailers within the district because it's not just medical. Obviously, it's a high concentration of medical, but there's coffee shops, and restaurants, and, and uh, art galleries. Thank you, pretty well knocked that out. And this is outdated now, too. Uh, like I said, Ted uh, stepped down from his chair. Tim Charles is now uh, our chair. Ta -da. Other questions? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, you said on Lake Avenue. Where is it on Lake Avenue? Yeah. Where? Oh, um, it actually goes past to. Okay, so here's 8th Avenue, and then it jogs down on uh, 10th or Mount Vernon, whatever you want to call that, and then it's actually over on 9th behind. You. And then back over. So uh, that that is actually right where they built. Actually, right here is where they built that new Harris um, Harris apartment building. So it jumps jumps just past eight to nine and then jogs back up. Does that answer your question? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I and mean, it's all in that area. Right. The rest is all in that on. It doesn't go down in terms of the third street. No, because again, now we're pushed up against the downtown district right there at the boundary. Oh, yeah, okay. Yes. What is it? Where is it? Um, let's see. It's like 12th Street. Uh, uh, get oh, that's not. Uh, yeah. get so this is, okay, 1st Avenue, 12th Street or College Drive, 2nd Avenue, which now dead ends into, into PCI, and then it literally goes up the alley behind Wolf Island. It's, oh, a, it's, okay. a, it's a mid block. It's a mid block cut okay, you from Mount Drive and, and, the, and then back up to uh, Wall yeah. Street. Uh, so they're losing now. A health plan is not part of that. You're not. They're, they're literally yeah. across the street. I got a health question to ask you. How close are y'all trying to uh, uh, implement uh, the mail clinic in Rochester, Minnesota? How close are y'all trying to do that? Not at all. Not at no. They're, they're a national health care provider. I mean, they're, they're literally drawing people from all over the nation. We're a regional. I mean, emulate maybe in the sense that we, we want to be considered and, and viewed as best, best in class. Everybody wants to, and you want to have the amenities so when people are here, whether they're here to support someone who's seeking health care or they're the patient, they want to feel comfortable and have options while they're here. But uh, I wouldn't say that the, the, uh, the Mayo Clinic is a model for us at all. They're huge. We're trying to be a regional provider. And, and one thing you need to know, PCI, St. Louis, <coughs> and uh, Mercy are drawing patients from throughout about a 14-county area regularly. Only about 40, 35 to 40% of their patients are from Cedar Rapids. We're already regional. We just need to do a better job of it. Sir, last question. Okay, that question. Uh, is, there, is, is there any connection between this and our streets that come the two ways down here? None whatsoever. The city paid for a study by, I'm trying to remember their name, who came in and talked about what makes a, a downtown more livable, workable, and, and desirable for retailers. And it was that you get rid of the stoplights, you get rid of the one ways, you put in the stop signs, and you do two ways. And so the people are slowed down, and it's safer for pedestrians, and it's, yeah. it, it makes people not just buzz through your downtown. Say, Correct me if I'm wrong about any of this. <laughs> but uh, that was the city doing their thing. We're, we're just being impacted by it, just like you are. And we manage around it. I'm done. Thanks, guys. Thank you.